Okay, welcome back Chemistry 20 students to our next review lesson. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the periodic table and ions. This is the periodic table of elements. And if you're not familiar with it already, you probably will be by the end of this course as we're going to be talking about this a lot. Um, today we're just going to start looking at how it's organized and how that relates to some characteristics of elements. So the first part I want to look at is just the big groups, and this is probably the biggest one. Um, this green area that I've shaded in represents metals. Uh, so metals take up most of the elements. Um, they're solid at room temperature. Um, some other properties as we can see there. Well, yeah, solid except mercury. Mercury is a liquid as we can see over here somewhere. Um, they're shiny um, when they're uh, solid. Um, they're malleable and ductile, which means they can bend and stretch a little bit, and they're good conductors of electricity. Now, those are all the metals. The opposite to those over here are the non-metals. So I'll shade that in, in yellow. Uh, they're kind of the opposite of metals, so they are uh, various states um, at room temperature. There's some solids, so uh, liquid we create right here with bromine, and then also lots of gases. Um, and they're dull, brittle, and poor conductors, so really the opposite of metals. Uh, right in the middle there, in between the metals and the non-metals, you can see that pink group, which is the metalloids. So as we go from metals to non-metals, there's kind of some there in between. They have some metallic and some non-metal properties. Uh, that's going to be the metalloids in the middle there. Next, what I want to do to take a look at why there's metals and non-metals and what makes them behave differently is to first look at the Lewis dot diagrams of the elements here. Let's look at the first 18. So let's look at these boxes here. So I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and we're going to look at drawing the Lewis dot diagrams for each of them. So we'll start with the elemental symbols and then we'll put the Lewis dot diagrams. So with the Lewis dot diagrams here, hopefully we can see a pattern. And the pattern is here in this first column, all of these elements have one valence electron. All these have two, three, four, five, six, seven, and all of these have eight, except for helium. We'll talk about that in a moment. So that seems to be how the periodic table is organized, having to do with its valence electrons, and its valence, valence electrons have to do with its properties. Um, the first thing I want to point out is this can be really useful in determining how to draw the Lewis dot diagram just based off the group number which is listed at the top. So this is group one, this is group two, there's those ten in the middle uh, that were in the fourth row or the fourth period, uh, so I don't have those here. And then we go up to 13. Now I know you would think maybe 13 uh, valence, but just don't consider that one. And just know there's three here, four here, five here, six here, seven here, and eight for these two. So that can help a lot for when you're drawing the Lewis dot diagram. The next thing I want to talk about is what this does to their properties. We're going to see on the next slide that if an element has a completely empty or filled valence shell, it's more stable or in a lower energy state. So lithium over here is almost at that. If it just got rid of this one electron, it would be in a much more uh, stable uh, energy state. So it wants to just get rid of that electron, making it quite reactive. And similarly over here, fluorine just wants one more electron because then it would be filled. So it really wants to take one electron, making it reactive. So we have some highly reactive groups over there in 1 and 17. Um, the names for these, um, this is the alkali metals here in group 1 with one valence. Next to it are the alkali earth metals. They're still fairly reactive, but a little bit less with these two valence electrons uh, in group 2. Uh, going all the way over here is the halogens, which is those with seven valence electrons. And then next to that, you might think that these would be more reactive because they're opposite or they're on the extreme right side, but these are actually really stable. They're called the noble gases, and they're stable because they already have that filled valence shell. Neon has a filled of eight, argon has a filled of eight, and helium is where we're going to talk about why it's not eight. This has a filled shell of two. And this is because it's electrons, it only has electrons in that first shell, which only fits two. And this also shows us some organization of the periodic table. Hydrogen has one in the first shell. Helium has two in the first shell over here. So that's all that can fit there. So this isn't a very stable energy state. So that's why it goes over here with the noble gases. It's got its valence shell filled. When you get a third electron, you would have to go to a next energy shell. So the periodic table doesn't put lithium right here, 
it drops it down to the next row because this is representing those that have their valence shell as the second level. So this is one electron in the second level, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and neon with eight. And neon is full with eight, so it's a noble gas. It's got a full valence shell. When we add another electron, eight only fits here. So we need to go to the next shell, the third one, which would be sodium here. So one in the third shell, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then argon with eight. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense for how it's organized and can also help you with your Lewis dot diagrams. Now, as I was saying there, atoms are gonna be in a lower energy state or more stable when they have a filled or empty valence shell. So that means that these elements are going to try to get in that state to either empty their valence shell or fill it up. Lithium has just that one electron. So if we get rid of that one electron, it would be in a more stable state. Sometimes I say it's being, it would be happier in that state if it got rid of that electron. And then fluorine just wants one more electron. If it got one more, it'd have a full eight and it would be happy there. So let's put that up there, more stable with a full or empty valence shell. So it's gonna try and get to that state. So let's draw lithium getting to that more stable state. So what it would have to do is it would have to get rid of that electron. And then it would just have two in the first shell, and it'd be happy because it got rid of that one electron. Okay, the fluorine would have to gain one more, and so it would look like this. It would have its second shell completely filled. What these are called is these are no longer called atoms, like I put over there, but they are called ions. Ions have given or taken electrons, and now they're in a more stable state with a charge. Because lithium got rid of an electron, electrons are negative, it still has three protons, but now only two electrons. So it has a one plus. Fluorine had nine protons and nine electrons, but now it has gained another electron. So now it's going to have a negative charge because it has one extra electron. So these are examples of ions with their full or empty valence shell. And these are the atoms where they are neutral. Another word that you might see come up for a positive ion would be a cation and a word for a negative ion would be an anion. So you might see those terms as well. So now that we know about giving away or taking electrons to become more stable, the metals and non-metals kind of make a little bit more sense. When we look on this green side, at least we can see from those top Lewis dot diagrams we drew over here with the lithium, beryllium, sodium, and magnesium, those had few valence electrons. That first group or first column only has one, so they want to give it away. And that second one has two, and they want to give it away. So metals over here want to give away their electrons. They don't have very many, so to become more stable or happier, they like to give away those electrons. Opposite to that over here, which we can see these ones, they had lots of valence electrons, and they wanted to take them. So non-metals want to take, metals want to give. Now when non-metals and metals interact with give and take, we'll talk about that in the next lesson, but for right now, I just want to look at the Lewis dot diagrams for ions. So if we're going to draw the Lewis dot diagram for a nitrogen atom, we've done this before. We put an N, we see that it is in the 15th column, or we can count up electrons and know that there's going to be five valence. Now if I'm asked to draw the ion, I need to make it so this is stable or happy. So looking at nitrogen, it's at five and it wants to get to eight. You can kind of think, would it be easier to gain three more or get rid of five? The lower number is usually the case. So it would rather take three more than give away five. So to make it happy, we're gonna draw three more in here. We're gonna go one, two, and three. So it's got a full octet, as sometimes it's called a full eight. Now the other thing we have to include there is the change in charge. Remember these are called ions now because they've gained or lost electrons. This has gained three extra electrons. Electrons are negative. So we would give this a charge of three minus. I put the brackets there to show that nitrogen with all those electrons is three minus. And that's it for this video. So today we looked at how the periodic table is organized by atomic properties and by valence electrons. Uh, we also talked about how full or empty valence shell is more stable, how metals have few valence electrons, they want to give them away, and non-metals have lots of valence electrons and they want to gain electrons to be more stable. All right, we also said that if a metal gives away its electrons, it's gonna be positive or a cation. And when non-metals take electrons, they become a negative anion. I hope that video made sense for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.